Welcome to the video of indicating on a four jaw chuck. I will not be showing you guys how to indicate on a three jaw or a six jaw just because those are universal jaws and they move together. And on a four jaw, they move independently. A lot of people stray away from the four jaw because they are afraid and intimidated because it's gonna take them a little bit longer. But in reality, a four jaw is more accurate and it's just overall better because it gives you more adjustment when it comes to indicating as opposed to the three jaw which is not much adjustment before we get started let me go over a few rules uh, you want to be sure to be very very clean you want to use the reference circles on the front of the jaw or front of the chuck for reference so you can use look at your jaws and move them accordingly to the circles and if you do that that'll get you within 50 thou or so and that's that helps a lot so you don't just want to move the jaws and expect them to be around the same spot so that's what the circles on the front of the chuck are for i would suggest getting a scale and using a scale instead of holding your part up there trying to get your part clamped on with all the jaws just use a scale to get you close and then you slide your part in and then you can start clamping on it now i've seen a lot of different machinists do different techniques when it comes to a four jaw i've seen people make a uh, make something for the tool post so they can slide their travel indicator in so it stays centered to the chuck. I've seen people use two keys instead of one so they can slide the two jaws at the same time. But what we are going to be doing is indicating a piece of stock material in this video. And we are just going to be using one key and we're going to be using a travel indicator. Now if you have a finished part, you can use a travel indicator to get close. but in the end you want to use a test dial indicator you do not want to use a travel indicator if you want to be within a few thou so you you can if that's all you have it's it should read within a thou or so but if you had to be really accurate and it was necessary i would highly suggest using a test dial indicator all right so let's go ahead and get started i have a piece of material here and it is around two inches in diameter So I'm going to get my key and I'm going to scale, I'm going to move my dial or my travel indicator out of the way and I'm going to scale in the two inches and I'm going to use the circles doing so. So first things first, I'm just going to pick a place for my jaws to go. That way they're lined up the same way. Okay, so I'm about 2.3 to 2.4. So I'm gonna scoot it in just a little more. And again, I'm looking at the front of my jaws using those as references. And we are about two inches away. Okay, so after I've used my scale to kind of get a reference and slide my piece of material in and let's flip let's flip the other way and it's just a piece of coral stock material nothing's finished on it then I'm just gonna nip the two different jaws that are 90 degrees to each other so it just doesn't wobble out of the chuck all right So now I'm going to position my travel indicator on top of my stock. Alright. Now that it's positioned, I'm about a hundred thou out. Now when it comes to a four jaw chuck, it's a push-pull push relationship. So what I would suggest doing is over exaggerating the movements in your head. So if it's, for instance, let's see how to explain this. If it's too far this way, you can take your travel indicator and push up. Well, if it's pushing your travel indicator up, that means that this jaw needs to be pushed down. And I can't really push this jaw down without loosen, loosening the opposing jaw. It takes a little bit of practice, but the best way I could explain this is just over-exaggerate the four jaw chuck in your mind and 
we're going to find the loose side or the low side and we are going to loosen the low side. The high side we are going to leave alone and we are going to loosen the low side. So that's positive and that's low. So I'm going to loosen the low side and I'm going to go 180. I'm going to push down the high side. Okay, again, and you just keep repeating yourself over and over. So you got your high side, you got your low side. So we loosen the low side, which it's a little bit loose. So we're going to flip around and tighten it. Okay, so now we're within about 50 as opposed to 100 thou. So yet again, I'm going to go to my low side, loosen it. And you don't want to go too much, otherwise your part might start wobbling out of the chuck. So just little bit by little bit. Okay, so now I'm within about 10. So I go to my low side and I loosen it. And as I get closer to being indicated in, I'm loosening it less and less. Because if I loosen it a, like one whole turn, it's going to go way, way out of whack. Find the low side, loosen it, go to the opposite side and tighten it down. All right, now at this point when I'm within about five, I try to just, just tighten. I do not keep loosening it. So I find my high spot and I tighten it down. Okay, so that is how you indicate on a four jaw chuck. There are different methods. If you are only holding on to a half inch of material and you had an inch sticking out, there are different methods that you have to use. For instance, you have to indicate up close to the chuck. And then once you get within about five or so, you move away from the chuck and you bump it in. Because if you're holding on to right here, just because it's indicated up close to the chuck doesn't mean away from the chuck is wobbling. So be sure that you're safe and when you're using this technique until you get used to it, be sure to hold on to as much material as you can so that when you turn the lathe on, if it's going to sling out of the lathe, it's going to be as soon as you turn it on or as soon as you start making your first cut. So make sure you're very tight. Each jaw is tightened down. So when you get done indicating it in, go around and make sure that each one is tight. And at this point, if I wanted to be even closer, I would get a test indicator and just take my time, make sure it's indicated in because sometimes it takes longer to indicate something in than it is to cut it. But that is one of the most important steps is indicating something in.